Okay, good day viewers, thanks for joining us today. What I thought I'd show you is a demo of how we uh, convert our PDS DRV files uh, into PDMS. Uh, I'll go through and select the files. And we can select all of the available files from all the different disciplines. There's structural, piping, mechanical, raceway and some junction boxes and while they're processing uh, this this data will convert all the, the, the data that's available in the DRV files that are produced out of PDS as part of the design review which is the file set that's typically handed over from the engineering contractor to the uh, client uh, once the projects completed and is often all that the client has as far as a 3d model uh, over the last 30 years. So we can take all that data and then import that into PDMS and this is just a sample of one particular area just so you can see uh, the process actually happening. So it's just processing the piping models at the moment. This particular sample area has got 41 different models in it. And you can see it's fairly quick to go through and and process the actual data. So this is n not only taking the graphical information from PDMS, it's also uh, reading the DRV files and uh, pulling together all the data so that it's named consistently in PDMS. With the structural models that it's processing now, it will also create the catalogue and uh, spec data for uh, structural spec references so that the steel uh, that are standard sections in PDS actually gets created as true uh, gen sex in uh, PDMS all right just coming up to the last ones now okay so that's completed that's the microstation side of things and that took just over two minutes. And just so you can see what sort of file types are actually, or what data is contained in the file types rather. Uh, let me just open a typical uh, text file. So this is actually a mechanical model. So what's in here is the nozzle data uh, the service of, for that nozzle, the size, the end prep for the flange, the rating, uh, the equipment that it's associated to and the description of the equipment. So obviously these first few are all nozzles because they're re repeated in different nozzle numbers. Uh, and then the whole file will be listed per element as to, to uh, which piece of equipment the element's related to and the description of that item. Okay, so we'll move into PDMS now and, and I'll show you the rest of the process. So in PDMS uh, Paragon, I've just gone into that module, uh, you can see that we've create, we've already pre-created some uh, standard catalogue data. There's the um, structural geometry, there's a standard nozzle category catalogue, and we've we can load those straight in from the files that were created when the structures were processed, the structure models. That's the catalogue being added and that would be any missing structure section details that would get added. So all of that is very quick and easy uh, and based on the standard PDS section details. Okay, so I've jumped across to PDMS now and what we'll do is we'll load in the files that were created from MicroStation, from the DRV files. Uh, this multi-load file gets created automatically when uh, all the MicroStation models are processed. So we're just going to drop that in and wait for that to process. Okay, there we go. So. Once that's loaded, uh, we can see that all the disciplines have come through. There's no errors when it loaded. 
and we can just click around and see what's going on in here now. So these items are now tagged. That's a piece of equipment, which is the feed flash drum. Uh, it's, in, it's come from model ME3402 in this case, which is a microstation mod model with the DRV file. Here's a piping model. This is a line number, which is a 1050 size pipe, uh, fluid code of GV, and the line number is 34010171. The pipe class is A3 and there's no insulation on it. So the settings in here have been set already for uh, uh, obstruction to be solid. Let's change that to 25% and apply. Okay, so you can see now when we zoom in on these items. Where there is insulation. This item here is actually a maintenance volume. Okay, it's for maintenance areas. There's another one in the back here. You can also see some of the equipment that's got some... Uh, uh, volumes around the handrails and also equipment where there's volumes around the stairs and ladders. You also notice with some of the equipment that all the nozzles are identified as actual nozzles with a cat ref so you can actually attach to them as a with, with true piping if you wanted to. And all that data is pulled from the DRV files. Just one other thing to point out with the piping. If we look at the line that we looked at previously, it's created as equipment with uh, sub-elements for uh, each of the components. And if you look at any one of those elements, it's actually uh, has a header with the description if the description's available and I'll have a, I'll show you a bit more about that in a second and then the actual components that make that up so if we zoom in on this particular flange you can see the actual elements that make up that flange uh, this is a large 1050 size flange and the other thing to look at too is uh, with instruments, uh, the same thing happens in SPs. The tag number will come through uh, in both the description and the way the item's identified. So if we zoom to that element, uh, you can see that uh, uh, control valve there is highlighted. So we can search for tagged instruments quite easily within the model. Now regarding the uh, elements in the DRV file, This is the flange that we looked at earlier uh, and you can see there's actually no description of the element at all. Some PDS design reviews contain a short description of the element, uh, some don't. It really depends what the original uh, engineering company has decided to export as part of the DRV files. So we can pull in all of the data that's available here. Uh, if, if required into the system, either as UDAs uh, or into direct fields, uh, existing fields, um, but only if it's available. So for the tag numbers um, for this HV196, again, there's no description of the item, but we do know what line it's on. Um, and we've got insulation on that particular line. It's personnel protection, which we can tell because it's got a P on it. Okay, so now what we want to do is do an export of that data. And we're going to output it to just a temp location. and add in all of the sites. I'm 
Let's make sure the representation is correct as well. So we get all the obstructions and export that. So here's a merged model of the microstation models all together, uh, shown with the uh, hidden line, so we can see what they look like combined, and, and then it looks uh, similar, obviously, to the PDMS model, uh, being the basis for the export. OK, after exporting the uh, data from PDMS to a RVM file, design review file, I've imported all that data into Navisworks. Uh, we've got a list of all of the DGNs and PRP steel files that make up the sample project and then we've got a, a, an export of the DRV RVM file from PDMS. So if I move around in here you can see that the two overlap um, properly um, and you can, I guess you can see that because they different surfaces shimmer where the graphics card can't determine which one to show. So the PDMS stuff's in grey and the microstation and PRP files are in the, the colours that um, match the microstation models. So if we click on anything in here we could get either the data from the DGN file or potentially from the RVM file from PDMS depending on uh, which surface the graphics card picks up when it's selecting stuff. So some of the things that are also interesting when you look at this is back in one of these equipment models. There we go. Even models that don't uh, match up properly between the equipment and the piping models. So that's the PDMS uh, nozzle. That's actually the microstation nozzle element and then here we've got the microstation piping model and that's the piping uh, data from PDMS. So you can see that everything overlaps perfectly. Okay, so that's all I'll go through uh, with this demo. Um, I guess the, the reason I wanted to show people how uh, this is done is partially to, to show how straightforward it is from my point of view. There's a lot of code that's gone into it. But also, um, you, you might wonder why bother doing this. And part of the reason is because having intelligently tagged graphic models, even if they're old, um, are very useful to still overlay with a laser scan or a photogrammetry scan of an existing plant, which gives you the latest and up-to-date millimetre perfect uh, maintenance and, and as-built details. But it's very hard to search for things uh, in the models if they're not tagged properly. And so this allows you to overlay uh, the old original design with the new stuff and still be able to search for everything in one location. So that's the main reason why uh, I believe this is still valuable to, to projects and, and clients and engineering contractors. Okay, thank you.